Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful, whenever you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Zidi, the guy that went all into Bitcoin in 2016 after selling his house and everything else. Now, yesterday I did a really cool tweet uh, on Twitter and also I posted it on Noster because I love the decentralized version of Twitter as well, where nobody is being blocked or censured. Uh, but the question was, what are your biggest fears for Bitcoin? And out of all the answers, there were 10 big fears for Bitcoin that I'm going to talk through now uh, during this video. Let's just have an open discussion on those fears and what my opinion is about those fears, okay? Um, they are in random order. It's not like number one is the most important one or number 10 is the most important one. No, you need to watch the whole video to see all those fears. <laughs> I can't even believe people are afraid for Bitcoin, but there are fears that I was like, okay, yeah, you got a point over there. So now let's go and check those fears in this video while I walk to this beautiful park here in Phuket. First fear and first legit fear was a Bitcoin ban. So for me, a Bitcoin ban is impossible. How are they able to ban Bitcoin? They can never ban Bitcoin or the users of Bitcoin because then they should be banning or they need to ban all the Bitcoin miners, miners worldwide. And the Bitcoin miners, yes, are huge companies, but are also still single people that have a full node or a full Bitcoin blockchain running on their PC or on whatever equipment they have up and running on their attic. So to ban it in that way is impossible. Um, the ban of usage is also impossible because we can still use it. It can make it illegal for us to use it, but then still we will keep using it. Weed was illegal all over the world and everybody was smoking weed and there was many more, more things that is illegal, but people do use it. So as long as you and I decide that we see a value in Bitcoin and we can use it among each other, uh, then there is no ban. Uh, what can they ban? They can ban the off and on ramp to Bitcoin. That is true. But that's coming uh, in another fear that is in the second or third on the list. Now, let's go into the second fear. So, banning Bitcoin, eh, not possible. Those centralized mother eh, and fuckers uh, are not able to ban Bitcoin whenever they want. Just not possible, in my opinion. The second fear was Satoshi surfacing. So, Satoshi telling us who he is, and then he still has 1 million Bitcoins, and then maybe he will dump them onto the market by uploading them to Binance or Bybit, in my opinion. By the way, if you want to trade on Bybit, yes, use my link. Man, that was a beautiful uh, jump into my uh, referral system. Jump into Bybit, because Satoshi, when he sells, he will sell on Bybit. And then you will be the first to buy the Bitcoins of Satoshi. And that's exactly what I mean. Like, yes, Satoshi could surface, and yes, Satoshi could want to dump his 1 million tokens. But then, I still believe that there is a shitload of people that want to buy those tokens as they has never moved and probably those tokens still have all the hard and soft forks within it so you can claim your Bitcoin cash and all the other code tokens by just buying those tokens of Satoshi. So for me, um, yes, Satoshi was the founder. Satoshi de deserves all the respect. But then again, I don't think that Satoshi created all this beautiful technology to be dumping it on the retail investors as it was exactly invented to save the retail investors from those centralized huge crooks to banks. So for me, one, I don't think that Satoshi will ever come because I think it was a collective and that collective, I think one or two people maybe are not here on this beautiful earth anymore. So that won't be a problem. And two, if he would be surfacing, then he wouldn't be dumping the tokens on retail, retail investors. He would probably do something really cool with it that nobody can expect at the moment. So that was the second fear. Eh, not a fear for me. The third point, a 51% hack, guys. A 51% hack means that there needs to be a huge investment done in mining equipment to be able to get 51% of the hashing power and by that control the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, which is almost impossible because the cost of creating that big of mining, the cost of doing this is, uh, I think, bigger than um, the revenue would be. So for me, yeah, there was something stuck between my flip-flop. For me, a 51% hack is too expensive nowadays to be done. So for me, 51% hack, eh, not possible. Number four, fear number four, the CBDCs succeeding in their launch and then they would um, ban all the on and off ramps of Bitcoin. Yes, that is a legit fear that I have as well. For me, if all those sheeple out there, and I don't know if you're a sheeple, but if you are one of those people that are still supporting the banks and the central banks and the central banks digital currency, then that could really happen. So yes, it could happen, 
that, for example, all the cash will be eliminated, eliminated from this world. There would no be cash anymore. And then the only form of money would be a central bank's digital currency, which they have full control on. So they would determine if you can buy or sell bitcoins with that currency. And that is the biggest fear I think people should have. And that is why people should understand to be buying bitcoins now and be fighting really hard with the central bank's digital currencies. Still, if you have your bitcoins, um, we can still use them, but then you cannot sell them to, into central bank's digital currencies anymore or buy them with central bank's digital currencies. So what it would do exactly to the market, I don't know. And I still hope that all the people still understand that we still need to fight this fight as this is a peaceful revolution that we need to create a better future for ourselves but also for our children that is not like enslaved future like fully controlled in a central bank's digital currency system uh, where there's a social credit system tied to it and all that stuff we don't want that but yes that is a legit fear if people don't wake up now and if they don't start to accumulate a shitload of bitcoin and the central banks would make cash disappear and then the only alternative would be central bank's digital currency that would be not good for bitcoin in my opinion good fear fear number five guys is an internet black down i hope that the sound is good it's really windy maybe i need to make the video again internet blackout so in the blackout i think is not gonna happen i think a lot of people fear that there's a world war three and that it's an internet blackout all over the world that they would also influence all the um, other businesses in this world so that we also influence the whole fiat system because they can't work without internet there would not be atms there would not be bank system there would not be anything if there is an internet blackout so i think the last thing to happen is an internet blackout and i think elon musk has a lot of satellites up in there i think blockstream nowadays has also satellites up there i think there is even now new decentralized internet projects in the blockchain that are putting up satellites and balloons and all that stuff over there, not the Chinese balloons, it's other balloons. Um, and by that, decentralizing the use of internet, decentralizing the use of data and all that stuff. So for me, that would be uh, a, a non-fear because the internet, you know, Bitcoin is not completely depending on the internet. We have the satellites, we have the radio waves, we have many other ways to communicate with each other uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain or through the Bitcoin blockchain. So we can still keep sending Bitcoin and sets if we don't have internet. But still, I do think that the governments will lose their control on the internet and that the internet will also be decentralized in the next, de next decade and that everyone in this beautiful world will have free access to the internet. So, not a legit fear for me. And then we get number six, guys. Number six is quantum computing. A lot of people comment on quantum computing. Yes, I do understand why you comment quantum computing, but on the other hand, you know, if quantum computing would really happen, it will happen on both sides. It will happen on the governmental side, but it will also happen on the Bitcoin and blockchain side. So the normal people, we, and maybe the little bit more rich freedom fighters in this world, they will also have access to quantum computing and they will also use quantum computing, maybe even earlier than all the governments because they need to do all this regulatory framework and all the stuff to be able to uh, use in quantum computing, you know? Uh, mostly, we, the normal people, outsmart and outrun the governments because they are very slow. So if quantum computing would be introduced, I think it, would take, it wouldn't take very long for the complete Bitcoin blockchain to be running on a quantum computer as well. So that's not a legit fear for me. Uh, quantum computing is for everyone in this world, so not only for the governments, also for us, the blockchain and the Bitcoin people. And uh, not a good fear. Next one. Fear number seven, guys. Bitcoin being hacked. In my opinion, this is completely impossible because you cannot hack the blockchain. To hack the blockchain, you need to do that 51% attack that we already spoke about. Because if you hack one computer or change the blockchain on that one computer, all the other Bitcoin miners and all the other computers will say, eh, that one is not valid anymore because that one is rigged. So hacking the blockchain, in my opinion, is impossible. The 51% attack, again, unlikely but that one is possible so if you call that a hack then that would be a valid hack but again that valid hack would cost so much money that nobody would be doing that because i don't think there is people on this world that have that kind of capital and if they would spend that capital they won't return anything back for that because we would hard fork the blockchain into a new blockchain and we would be left with an old blockchain that was hacked and we will be continuing on the new blockchain again that isn't hacked so for me complete decentralization impossible to hack in any kind of way normal hack or 51 percent attack so that's my answer on that one let's go to fear number eight 
Bam. Number eight. Uh, number eight was a really cool one. Aliens. There was a few people that commented aliens. Uh, so the fear of a Bitcoin is aliens. Why? Because they are afraid that the aliens would take our Bitcoins. I think that would be a positive part. If there were really aliens and aliens would like invade our world, I think they wouldn't want to transfer cash with us. I think they would understand Bitcoin instead of fiat. Because the aliens, they understand how to communicate in a digital way, peer to peer. So for me, then Bitcoin would be a better use case for the aliens than the fiat money would be. So I think the aliens would be supporting Bitcoin in that way, and maybe even taking it to the moon, literally speaking, because they would be capable to take it to the moon. And that's exactly where we want to go with Bitcoin, to the moon. So aliens, funny, but I don't think at the moment um, that should be a fear. You never know. You never know, but I think alien would be a little bit richer than the people on the earth. I don't think they are still searching for happiness in materialistic stuff. In my opinion, aliens wouldn't be materialistic. Like the, these are these green naked men running over the street like aliens. That's, they don't care about money. They don't want a Rolex or a new Thomas Bouquet or a Lamborghini. They don't care. They have a spaceship. They have other things to worry in life. How to conquer the universe, something like that. Aliens, are eh, not a fear. And now there comes a fear that many people come to as well. That's the ninth fear. The ninth fear was Bitcoin is created by the governments. So some people really think that Bitcoin is created by the governments and they did create it only with one goal. And the goal should be to have all the smart people and the freedom fighters like me, myself and I, <laughs> not the smart part, the freedom part, <laughs> to get them all on board and something that they created to then BAM destroy it completely and by that destroy the capital of all the smart people that want to change the world to a better place. So the government placed a Trojan horse into our and into our world so that we that want to protect the world from centralized entities as those governments would fall in that trap by supporting Bitcoin, going all into Bitcoin, even selling their house for Bitcoin, and then the government would be like, let it explode, it's gone, uh, Bitcoin was a scam, and then all those people are left over without their capital anymore, with a little bit less power uh, to change the world. I think we would still have the passion to wanting to change the world, and I think there will be a other revolution then, in a way that people can't expect at the moment yet, because if they would take that on this way, from us after the three years of lies that we already now experience of the governments about anything in the world. I also checked my other tweet about that. They have been lying to us for years after year after year after year after year after year and we just fell all for it. And most of you fell for it. Um, maybe I did a little bit less because I really took the time to read into the stuff that they were trying to tell us that was true, of which we all knew it was a fucking fake show. So yes, governments could be, but in my opinion, and eh, no fear there because if this adventure stops we would go and continue with the next adventure and the next revolution to disrupt those governments from having all the power and control on us as human beings or the aliens whatever there might be first are left over on this beautiful earth and the tenth fear is that the one million bitcoins the first one million bitcoins that are still in satoshi's wallet would start to move so that's combined with the other fear satoshi surfacing so yes I think it would be very exciting if I would see the 1 million or part of the 1 million Bitcoin Bitcoins that are held in a Satoshi uh, wallet moving because then we would know for sure that Satoshi is still around or that someone was part of the Satoshi group still has access to those million Bitcoins and that would bring some excitement yes and I think a lot of people always live in fear they are always afraid and they're always taking decisions out of fear so i think if the one million tokens started to, move, started to move then a lot of people would be dumping their bitcoins out of fear because they would be afraid that satoshi would start to move them into an exchange to sell off the market so that could have a very really bad influence on the people on the other hand um maybe satoshi wants to move them um, to do something else with it, maybe to give it to poor people, maybe to redistribute the wealth all over the world. You know, we don't know yet, uh, but yeah, I agree. If I would see those Bitcoins um, move, 
I think a little bit of fear would crawl into my head as well. Now, that were the 10 most mentioned fears in my tweets, guys. Um, so I hope I gave you an answer and at least my opinion on all those fears. So for me, um, no fear. You know the slogan, no fear. Uh, don't fear life and try to embrace life and enjoy it to the fullest. Live life every moment of the day. We can have fear for the future, um, but we don't know what is going to happen. And we don't have influence of that future. It took billions of years for me to be standing here and doing this video and you to be watching it on YouTube. So who are we to think that we can change the future? We couldn't change that in the last billions of years. We will not be able to change it now in the come upcoming time. Why would you worry or fear the future if we don't have um, any control on it? So for me, um, no fear over there. I would just enjoy the full adventure of Bitcoin to the fullest and then let's see where it all goes. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, then give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and leave a comment. What do you think about my answers on all those fears? And I go into the dark and I'm in the light. So let me know down below. What do you think about my answers on those fears? Thanks you for watching. See you tomorrow again. Bam.